Hi everyone, in this video we're going to use the ID node to create a kind of hatching pattern. So that's uh, using noise maps, well in this case it's a noise map, to control uh, the IDs of objects, which yeah, creates this kind of funky um, result. Uh, but you can use anything, you could use footage, um, you could use video, you can use Im still images, you can use whatever you want. Um, and uh, that's one example of it, and then another example of it which I'm going to loop, is this one here, and it's just a load of changing numbers, and um, this is the, just the, it's the exact same technique, so um, it's just a different use for it, and uh, yeah, so let's get going. Uh, I'll do the, well, I'll do the numbers one first, so uh, I'm just going to create some 3D type, and then I'm going to turn off extrusion, uh, the font I'll be using is uh, appropriately named, it's called square font, and then I'm going to type in some characters in here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then I also want the full stop, so that done, I uh, say I'm happy with my 3D text. What I want to do is duplicate it, hide the original. Uh, the duplicate I'm going to separate, so I'm just going to go to the modeling menu and go mesh separate like that. Um, and now, uh, once it's separated, what this does is it turns all the different uh, type characters into different models here. Uh, if I hit the W key, you'll see that the pivot points for all these objects is at the origin, which is no good, so we need to center the pivots. So if we go modify center pivot, all the pivot points go to the correct positions. However, uh, you see that we have the full stop selected over here. It translates read 000, which is no good. Um, MASH needs to know where objects are uh, to work properly, so we need to uh, bake the pivot. So we center the pivot, and now if we bake the pivot, uh, now the translates uh, have the correct information. So that done. We can just go to the animation menu sets and go MASH, create MASH network and get on with it. So I'm just going to change the distribution type to grid, then I'm going to modify the grid settings uh, to some numbers I have already tried. And um, if, in, oh, by the way, if you're wondering how to change the background color, Alt B in the viewport changes the background color, cycles through some defaults. So um, I'm just going to turn the grid off, and then I'm on, I want the I'm going to look look at this through the top viewport. So I can't see any of my objects here. So I need to rotate them. So I'm going to add an offset mode and uh, rotate them minus 90 degrees in the x axis, which will make them appear. And then, that done, uh, we can add the ID node. So let's just add the ID node, and you'll see that we're kind of like cycling through all of our models here. A few options, we can give them random IDs or whatever. We can cycle through them, which is kind of the built-in animation for the, um, uh, the ID node. But it doesn't have the control that we want, so um, here are the settings for cycle IDs, but we're, we're kind of not interested in that. What we want to do is we want to set a fixed ID. So we want to set a fixed ID of the maximum ID we've got, which is this full stop here, this dot, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the strength map to modify this. So um, as you can see, changing the strength map modifies the ID. Uh, so uh, let's do that. So I'm going to add a, I'm going to click on the checkbox here for the strength map, and I'm going to right click on ramp and go create as projection, which is going to create a projection node for me. So select that in the outliner, I'm going to scale it right up. About that big there, just just slightly bigger than the mesh network, and then I'm going to rotate that minus 90 degrees in the x-axis, which makes this projection that is just slightly larger. Maybe we want it a tiny bit bigger, slightly larger than the um, than the actual network. Uh, this is important, so I'll explain why in a second. Uh, so I can click on the place 3D texture, and then I can. Uh, click the button to go to its output connections, and then I'm on the um, I'm on the uh, projection node, and I can go forwards to the ramp. So uh, actually, if I go, it's uh, it's just up at the top here. You can hit ramp to get to it, um, and then you can use the ramp to control the objects. So um, the reason that the projection app is um, uh, that I wanted it larger than the network is so that I could scribble all of them as white, but still have whoops, but still have a um, another swatch back here. So that's why I've done that. So uh, if I was to shrink the projection uh, so that it's the right size, you see that the bottom, um, the bottom row is uh, still has numbers, and that's because we've got a black color here. So that is why, um, that's why I've made sure that the projection is larger than the network. So um, yeah, so let's uh, change the interpolation to none. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate uh, our numbers coming on. So I'm going to, uh, I've got the white selected here, and I'm going to go to the keyframe on frame zero, on selected position. 
Then on frame 15, I'm going to set a position of 1. So all of we have numbers for um, all of our points. Then I'll, I'm going to set keyframe again. And then on frame 105, I will uh, set keyframe. And then on 120, I will put this back to 0. 0 0.04, whatever it was, and then set another keyframe. So our animation looks like this. So exciting. Um, okay, and uh, so how do we get all of the random numbers uh, in the middle here? Well, we what we do is we select the black color here, the black swatch. I don't really know what the correct name for that is. And then uh, on selected color here, we just hit the checker box and then we choose um, noise. So I'm just going to choose noise here. And then I'm going to animate the noise because if I just scrub through this, nothing's animating. That's because you need to animate this time attribute. So uh, let's just go to frame one and then set key on time and go to frame 120. And then if I put one in this box, then set key uh, and then play back. See that the um, numbers are all animating. Um, and then what we can do is uh, I need to change the amplitude to get rid of the dots because I don't. Um, the reason that the dots are appearing is because um, white is going to be the maximum ID and black is going to be the minimum ID. And so I want to get rid of any white from our noise. And so if I just reduce the amplitude until they go away and just make sure that I've still got the, some nines in here. There you go. Um, so if I just kind of scrub through, there's a little bit more there. So there you go. So we've got zero to nine. Uh, so all of our numbers are appearing and then I can just play through uh, like that. So um, if I um, just hit play now, I'm just gonna hide the place texture. And this is our kind of finished animation. And yeah, just a couple of keyframes involved there. Well, six, <laughs> but not many. And you've got something cool. So uh, that is example one. Uh, I'll show you example number two. So for this example, I'm going to create uh, some planes. Uh, so I'll just create uh, one with uh, four subdivisions in the height and width. Then I'm going to select the faces and oops, I've got um, I've got symmetry turned on. Let's get rid of that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> Excellent, thank you, Siri. You can go away. Um, uh, apparently, Siri can't turn symmetry off. Uh, so with the middle faces selected, just hit delete, and then I'm going to go into the edge selection mode and then uh, get the uh, double click on an edge to select the inside uh, selection uh, loop, edge loop, and um, scale that up. So I'm just going to scale it up and create a square like that. So that is a really inelegant way of doing that, but it works. Uh, so I'll create another polyplane, and this one is going to be kind of like a forward slash. So I'm going to make it um, kind of thin and just a bit shorter like that. Uh, so if you don't know how these virtual sliders work, by the way, I'm um, holding down the command key on the Mac, or you would do the control key on Windows or Linux, and then you just click and drag in the box. Um, so that's how that works. And then uh, I'm just going to uh, shear it, use, so like that, using the um, using the plane transform. So I'm going to shear it. And then let's create one final one and um, make this tiny. So 0 0.2 in there and 0 0.2 in here. Like so. So done. And I'm going to select these in order of uh, black to white. So the dot is going to be black and then the square is going to be white. So. Uh, that done, let's create a mesh network and then uh, what we can do is create a, a grid distribution and then let's give ourselves, um, let's say, 70 objects in each axis like that, turn the grid off. And then uh, what we can do, I'm just going to um, select our original objects here and I'm going to assign a white material to them just to make them slightly easy to see in the viewport. So I'm going to turn the incandescence right up. Uh, nothing's changed actually uh, because we're on the instancer um, and um, materials don't update when the objects are hidden. So you need to show our original objects and then uh, we can hide them again. So you see that the um, instancer updated the materials then. Uh, so um, now uh, with that done, we can... Um, add an ID node. So let's just do that. And then uh, I'm going to uh, change the um, ID type to fixed. Um, oh, our objects were too big then. I'm just going to go back to that mode and I'm just going to shrink them down a bit just so that they don't intersect. So something like that. And I'll turn on anti aliasing just so that we can see them better. I think we've probably got too many objects. 
let's make these slightly larger and I'll go and have less of them. So let's try 60, something like that. Okay, so fine. Um, back on the ID node, we'll choose a fixed ID. So and then we can change that to um, the white object. And then we can obviously, like before, play with the strength. So what we do in here is we can add a noise texture like we did last time, uh, set a keyframe um, on frame zero, and then we'll set a keyframe on frame um, 120 for the uh, time here. And then, you know, obviously we play through and then that gives you the kind of the result that we had. Uh, you can choose a different kind of noise if you want to. Um, or you can choose a different kind of texture. So you don't have to use um, the noise. We could use, let's choose, um, ooh, yeah, let's choose the Mandelbrot. And then let's uh, pick one of these presets. I have absolutely no idea whether these are gonna work. Um, <laughs> Not really off the bat. Uh, interesting. So, <laughs> crazy patterns. Yeah, so um, there you go. Can create some weird stuff like that. <laughs> Great. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we're all done. And I kind of hope you found it remotely useful. And I will see you in the next video.